have you, let me try that again. Oh, hey there. Today, we're going to talk about three different activities for teaching about the butterfly life cycle. Teaching students about the butterfly life cycle was one of my most favorite activities, favorite topic to teach in second grade. I love this because we had so much fun. And what was really funny is learning about all of the differences between moths and butterflies. Wait, there's a difference? A cocoon versus chrysalis. And there are so many pop culture references that are just plain wrong. Like a butterfly being a dainty little thing. Hello, monarch butterflies are like the marathon runners of insects. There ain't nothing dainty about that. Okay, so let's talk about some of those activities. The first one is to get a butterfly pavilion. I love these butterfly pavilions from Insect Lore. Once you order them, they give you a coupon so that you can get five butterfly eggs. By the time it ships to you, they're usually teeny tiny larvae. From there, the larvae eat the dried up fruit in the bottom of the can. And eventually, over a week or so, you can watch them form a J shape at the top of the lid. You take that and you safety pin it to the pavilion and eventually you watch the chrysalis turn into some gray thing to some dark black thing to where it's almost see-through and then eventually the butterfly crawls out. What's amazing is when this happens in the classroom kids get first-hand experience of witnessing complete metamorphosis. Now as I said earlier there are lots of pop culture references that are just plain wrong about butterflies. So one of our favorite things to do is to explore some of the texts, videos, articles, articles about butterflies and identify what those misconceptions are. One of the easiest misconceptions to spot is in The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. He calls the chrysalis a cocoon. And from his website, he says, cocoon just sounds better. Knowing this information, you can have students write a letter to Eric Carl trying to convince him to change the word. You can also have your students rewrite the story so that it's an important Formative story, or you can have students write from the perspective of the butterfly about the changes that happened using the correct terminology. If you have stem boxes, you can have pipe cleaners and straws or Play-Doh and toothpicks and have your students in groups of two or three. They can even do it independently. Have each group model a different stage of the life cycle of the butterfly. Then you can jigsaw it and put it all together or you can have each group model all four stages of the life cycle. When doing these activities, I love to use this butterfly life cycle lap book. This lap book is a place for you to record all of your learning. There are vocabulary words and games so that students know the correct terminology for the stages. There is a writing portion in there and there's also graphing so that the students can measure how many days the butterfly is living within each stage. This lap book can be found in my TPT shop so make Make sure you check out the description below. If you love this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment below and tell me what is your favorite butterfly activity. For more lesson ideas, make sure you subscribe to the Simply Steam YouTube channel. Stay tuned because next week I'll have more life cycle activities to share with you.